My area of research covers direct taxes and welfare, and in particular it looks at how the design of the tax and benefit system shape individuals' decisions on whether to work at all or how long to work for or the type of work that they do. And so in particular we look at various proposed or hypothetical reforms to the tax and benefit system and to try work out how this changes these, these incentives um, that people and, and households face. I think it's important for policymakers and the broader public to care about um, labour supply responses because behavioural responses have a huge role in shaping policy, both outcomes, uh, whether intended or unintended. For example, governments want to have a good idea of how much a tax cut or a tax hike will bring in or cost, and to do that they need to have an idea and a, an idea that's related to uh, the reality of how people will respond to these changes and to do so requires a, an understanding of how tax and benefit system interact with individuals' labour supply decisions. The second reason is that they often behave response is important is that governments often have explicit policy objectives such as moving more individuals into work or making it easier for individuals to move into work. And from this point of view, again, understanding the effects that the benefit system and tax system have on the incentive to be in work are, uh, is very important. An example here is recent IFS work carried out looking at how the new system of universal credit will affect these financial incentives to be in work or to work further hours. Um, and what that research shows is that on average individuals will be will face stronger incentives to be in work, but there is a mix among different types of people. So for example, sec um, the second earner in a couple will face a weaker incentive to be in work, although on average individuals face stronger incentives to be in work. Economists often look at the effect of tax and benefits on labour supply by looking at the responsiveness of hours of work to changes in the net of tax um, wage rate. Um, and so it's quite difficult to quantitatively get a, um, get a measure on, on this elasticity of labour supply, as economists call it, um, for various reasons. One of the reasons is with fixed cost to work, such as transport costs or childcare costs, um, the estimates which are usually obtained through standard um, and empirical tools will get biased upwards and so this this leads to you know you don't want to use the wrong type of elasticity the second reason it's problematic is that people don't always have the the choice or the or the, the ability to respond by changing their number of hours and indeed the larger margins of response are likely to be things like the amount of effort put into a job so given that these problems economists are moving towards new ways of modeling labor supply and in the modelling the way in which labour supply reacts to tax and benefits. And the IFS is at the centre of um, work relating to this. Uh, so there's been lots of work done at the IFS on looking at discrete labour supply uh, modelling, where you divide people up into part-time workers, full-time workers, and people not, not in work at all. And you, look at, you can look at these different ways of modelling labour supply to get around these usual challenges.